Finneman, the Takana, you will find it later in the um, uh, canvas. I have to see if I have to cut the uh, this 15 minutes pause. Right. Okay. Okay, then welcome back. And um, okay, so you see my screen. Hopefully. Um, yes, uh, so um, we are talking about scope management and let's continue from there. Yes, and um, um, there's two common problems. The first one is uh, scope creep that uh, when you uh, continue having many changes uh, after uh, the project starts. And the second thing is an unrealistic scope. When the project scope is too broad, and um, yeah, it can cause um, a lot of pro problems. Um, so the first thing is, uh, 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 is an example, it's a famous uh, case study uh, at McDonald in uh, 2001. Uh, so they initiate a project to create a, an intranet system that connect the headquarters with all of its restaurants in the USA uh, to get better control of the operation uh, 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 of, uh, if operations of them in a real time manner. So that's a good idea and that's pretty much doable nowadays with internet. But at that time with internet is, um, yeah, you need the physical layers and I need to run the wire to all of the places. So after spending like $170 million on consultants and, uh, in, and they actually initiate uh, the project, uh, they have the implementations already planned. Uh, Mount Donald realized the project is too large, too much to handle and terminated it. Uh, so, um, it is uh, important to handle and, and I know it will take time to, to uh, plan and control uh, your scope. And I'm very um, exciting to see how you will do that in your project. So don't make the project scope too large, but also don't make it too small. Uh, you need to make it fit with the number of people you have in your team. And I will uh, say if it's okay or not when I look at your work breakdown structure. And um, involve users in scope management. So if possible, involve and share uh, your plan with the customers so they can have on uh, 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 feedback on that. And um, yeah, using uh, third party, uh, like for example, WordPress is one kind of like of the cell software. So you, again, it's not a programming class, so you don't have to do everything from scratch. And uh, follow a good project uh, management process. And this, uh, what I hope that you will learn uh, uh, from uh, lectures in this course. Right. Okay, so um, now I will uh, go to the part two, uh, the time management. So uh, we talk about why we should uh, manage and control the time uh, activities within time management, which is uh, activity definition sequencing and the important tool, uh, which is network diagrams. And among network diagrams, uh, again, chat is uh, the uh, most popular one. And you will learn and need to create GAN chat for uh, your project plan. Uh, in the end, we talk about the estimations yeah, and the safety control. Um, so our project manager often cited that uh, uh, delivering project on time is their biggest challenge. And there's many statistics, many numbers uh, showing that, uh, yeah, it's very difficult to achieve this. 
And um, Tom has the least amount of flexibility. So for the effort, for the budget, it, you, 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 it's uh, more in your control, but Tom is a physical uh, uh, dimensions. At least you can do with that. And um, individual work styles and uh, cultural difference that can cause a uh, uh, scary conflicts. And um, yeah, and one dimension is uh, if you know about the personality test by Mia and Briggs. Uh, so it indicates the, the focus of people's attitude toward the structure. People, certain people prefer to follow schedule and meet deadlines, when certain people do not. So this also very much like uh, depends on the personalities, and you might need to work it out and, and talk about it explicitly in your team. Uh, so uh, there are six um, major uh, activities uh, uh, within the project time management. Um, that uh, uh, I'm showing here in my screen. Uh, so the first thing is to define the activities. And uh, do you know uh, where we can get the activities uh, for a uh, uh, time management? There's a, a very good way for you to identify uh, on the activities you need uh, to make the schedule. Uh, very good. So uh, from the requirement is the first things. You might uh, break down your requirements and you can create a duration timeline for uh, working with each of them. But uh, requirement is an artifact. Uh, then you will miss something which is not requirement like uh, meeting, like uh, administrative tasks, like documenting, like, yeah, many other things which is not related to requirement. Uh, there's another thing that I have already mentioned, uh, actually. Any other ideas? Yeah, so uh, we, we will um, uh, keep that question here. Uh, after you define all activities, then you need to create uh, uh, the order between them. You need to say which one you do first, which one will uh, follow. And then uh, the estimations. Yeah, we, we do is to see who can work on the activity and how long it will take and how much how much it cost to complete the activity. Uh, the estimation is also go to the number, uh, uh, the, the time, the durations and results. Then you start by uh, you know, visualizing your schedule and uh, yeah, when putting in uh, control when the project uh, starts. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, the detail input for each of the activities are showing here. Uh, might not, you might not see it clearly with the um, this detail, uh, but uh, yeah, you can click here to see the full version or you go to the PM book, project management book guideline that gives you more detail. Uh, so the activity definitions, uh, the or task or okay requirement is also very uh, highly related here. Uh, but uh, what you can take uh, as an input for this activity definition is the work breakdown structure. Uh, so work breakdown structure uh, give you the structure of tasks, activities of the project. 
So uh, it is a naturally, it is the direct input for you for uh, scheduling. Uh, in the scope management, you define uh, the structures of work. And uh, in a time management, you give it uh, the durations you plan for each of the tasks. And um, it's, uh, what is not showing in the work with that structure is a sequencing of the tasks of the activities. Because uh, if you see the uh, there's a link, the link uh, between items in work with that structure is uh, non-directional. You know, there are no like uh, arrows there uh, and it should not. Um, so the sequence uh, which should happen between or after, uh, then it should be uh, planned in the time management. There are three kind of like dependencies, like mandatory dependency, like by logic uh, or by nature of the work, or, or one thing have to happen after the other thing finish. And discretional uh, dependencies is a soft logic. Uh, it defined by the project. It's not a physical laws. And external dependency, it depends on uh, non-project activities. Yeah, and uh, there's a concept called critical path analysis that can be used. Um, so when you're sequencing, uh, when you see uh, the order between uh, uh, among the uh, uh, activities, then you you should have a way to visualize it. So you use what is called the network diagrams to, to display and visualize uh, this. Uh, so uh, there are many uh, kind of diagrams within the network diagrams for project management. And this is uh, one example. It's called uh, activity on arrow network diagrams. So uh, the, the, the circle uh, shapes represent the activities and uh, the activities that happens uh, after another. First of all, the activity two will happen after, after activity one finish. And you see the arrow between the one to two box. And similarly, it, it showing you like uh, how the projects are, uh, activities are organized. And uh, the number one, for example, A equal to one, meaning that the activity A has a duration of one day. Oh, yeah, there's uh, also the way you use the, the arrow to re represent uh, kind of uh, dependencies uh, in such uh, network diagrams. Yeah, uh, and uh, um, Okay, then the, when you uh, can visualize the uh, activity sequencing in a diagram, um, a common analysis to be done is a critical path analysis. So you use this one to calculate the total uh, project durations. Uh, and um, on this way, the critical path of a project is the series of activities that determines uh, the earliest time by which the project can be complete. Given this, because there are many um, uh, activities that happen in parallel uh, that you don't do like thing uh, when you uh, finish another. In fact, um, the thing can happen in parallel. So there might as it's a one uh, pass that is showing that um, that should be the longest part. Uh, but it's showing that it's the earliest time that project can be complete. So the critical path is the longest path through the network and have the least amount of slack or float. So slack or float is the, okay, the, the time can be delayed without delaying the success of the project. Um, yeah, so, so um, you, know, you should read more about uh, calculating critical paths or critical path analysis. But here I just showed you uh, an example uh, together with uh, the previous uh, uh, um, uh, diagram. Uh, so uh, here, for example, you will see there are four different paths that uh, leading to the, from the beginning to the end of the project from the one to eight. 
And the first one is the, you go to the A, D, H, and J, the top line. And the two middle line like B, uh, E, H, J, or B, F, J. And uh, the next one is a C, G, uh, I, J in the bottom. And uh, they have the different lengths. For example, the pass two is the uh, longest pass with 16 days. Now, uh, since the critical pass is longest part through this network, by the definition, uh, then we find out that the pass two is the critical pass of the project. So you can uh, tell uh, uh, the customer or you can tell other people, okay, uh, after our uh, planning, uh, we find out that it takes uh, 16 days uh, for us to complete this project. Uh, yeah, so uh, to, to note the concepts, like slack or float, that's the amount of time an activity can be delayed. And it usually will happen for an uh, activity that is not in the uh, critical path. And a total slack and total float is the number of time when you sum up uh, for all possible activities that can be delayed. And you know that like how much time that you can uh, 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 have flexibility. Yeah, okay, Christopher, share uh, uh, um, a link uh, to, to um, yeah, uh, article on how to identify and manage the critical activities in your project. Yeah, so again, part of the critical path analysis, you can also draw uh, um, for each activities, uh, the, the box with four uh, corners represent when you can uh, have early start, early finish, late start, late finish. So for each task with this, we see the flexibility uh, and you can uh, uh, use this for many things. Yeah, and uh, here's an example of like uh, a, a view on the free and uh, float time, free and total float time you can have. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I, I, I'm going through uh, as well. So here, uh, yeah, I think this is a, a good thing that um, the link that uh, has been shared here, how to identify and manage critical activities in your project. That's, um, yeah, that explains the concept. Yeah. Um, here yeah, maybe it's easier to see the critical pass, and uh, yeah, you based on the critical pass to give the an answer on how long it will take for making the project. Um, I think this give you a better understanding of the the critical pass and Gantt chart, but I think it's not enough for you to understand and to make the calculations. Uh, I can uh, find uh, another link. Um, yeah, I can share the, the another link uh, 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 later, but you can find it um, you know, from textbook, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, instead of uh, the diagram uh, uh, format, when you put it in a table format, you can also see uh, for each task, when is the latest you can start and when is the latest you can finish. And uh, with the, like total slack you can have. Um, yeah, so um, there are three main techniques can be used for shortening the schedule um, and both spacing on the critical path. So firstly, you shorten the durations 
of the critical activities, I mean activities in the critical path by adding more resource or change their scope. The second thing is the crushing activities by obtaining the greatest amount of schedules, compressions, or the least incremental cost. And fast-tracking activities by doing them in parallel or overlapping them. Well, um, the, the, well, yeah. I don't think this, um, yeah, so yeah, it might be useful in practice, but uh, in theory, this all make your uh, Yen chart look uh, very bad. Uh, it's also not that you should update your Yen chart frequently as well as update the critical past data. And there are software like uh, before there's a Microsoft project management part of the uh, 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 Microsoft Office suite. Uh, it uh, can calculate the critical path uh, automatically for you and maintain it for you. So professional PM tool also help you to do this. I don't know if you can do it, if you will use a professional tool in this course, but uh, I will at least tell you to use Trello and Jira as a tools to use. Um, okay, and then um, we talk about GAN chat. So GAN chat is uh, uh, a type of the diagram used for uh, visualizing uh, uh, activity sequence in time management. And uh, it uh, visualize the milestone uh, task and duration of tasks and the dependency among the tasks. Um, so, and uh, this is an example of a GAN chat. And uh, usually the activities or tasks uh, is taken from the work with their structures. And it should also be represented uh, following uh, the hierarchy of uh, work with the structure, like showing in this example. Uh, so in the pin, uh, in the column task name, you see uh, uh, items in my uh, in the WBS. Uh, level one initiating and level two uh, selecting project manager from project team develop project charter and then continue with the item two three four five and break it down further uh, so on the right uh, um, uh, panel you see uh, the durations represent by the gray box or gray uh, rectangle box and you also see the uh, the arrow uh, leading from the end of one box to the beginning of another box. So it shows the dependency between uh, these tasks. And uh, the summary of durations, uh, which is the, the black uh, 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 line here, is a black, black uh, shapes. It shows, for example, the initiating, it will happen during uh, this uh, uh, line. And planning is during this line. Yeah, so this is the the, the uh, how a uh, Yen chat uh, look like. And uh, this one is maybe more um, 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 it look uh, nicer. Uh, this uh, for a water for a uh, software project. You start first with a uh, requirement analysis, and then when you finish, you go with the uh, software design. The design doesn't have to be finished because after that you have the developments and testing. So if you see here in in the uh, uh, right uh, panel, uh, so the analysis first it have to be finished, right? And there's a milestone here: analysis complete. Uh, which represent by the diamond symbol, like uh, uh, 11 of January 2017. And uh, from here, uh, they start the design, the design, the database design start right after that with this arrow. But uh, at the same time, develop uh, the system module also started uh, because the, this arrow go from the diamond uh, symbol go down to the deployment system modules as well. 
So these two tasks I will uh, start in parallel. And then the other uh, design activities, other geoform activities happens. Testing also happens uh, when uh, the development system module finish. Here you see the arrow to two other activities that integrate the system module and perform uh, system testing. These two can happen in parallel right after the uh, system module development finish. Um, the difference from this and the previous one is that here they also assign the resource. Like you see the person name here, like Mike, Jennifer, and uh, Sam. Yeah, like seems like three people are working on this project. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there's a professional tool that help you to to um, control all of this and then the label the the uh, I mean the progress the work progress you can show automatically in the tool. Uh, but um, in the scope of this project, I don't think you don't have to to use such a tool that uh, for you to know. Yeah, and um, so Gantt chat is also uh, very important. Um, um, it's the second thing after work with that structure. So that's why I put it on in your project plan. Uh, you use a Gantt chat to communicate and the status of your project to monitor tasks. Um, yeah, I'm putting together a, a proposal for a project. Yeah, you, you can bring your GAN chat to show to your customer. I think that's going to be a very good idea. And um, yeah, to instruct, give instructions on the sequence and duration of tasks. And uh, you should calculate the critical path that, that's uh, important uh, to understand when the project can be finished. And um, part of the time management uh, we have is uh, the estimations. Um, you need to say like uh, uh, how, what is the number we should put for the duration of this task? What is the number we should put for the duration of other uh, tasks, right? And uh, we only have, we can only do that based on our best uh, estimations. Uh, so uh, the product backlog and the work with the structure will be the input for such uh, uh, estimations, right? Uh, you based on your historical experience, if you run a project before, uh, but if not, then we, we need to uh, use other things. Expert judgment. Yeah, you can talk and you can ask opinion from people who have a lot of experience with that course or with that project, that kind of project. And um, using uh, estimation tools, the tool uh, building uh, uh, on top of like mathematical foundations that uh, give you some numbers as well. First and foremost, you should understand your team, understand your team competence, commitment, and based on that, uh, you should together come up with the best uh, uh, estimations. And for doing that, I, I, I will uh, show you how to play the game of planning poker. So uh, it's also called a scrum poker. It's a, a common way to uh, make estimations. Uh, you can um, give estimation for time, for effort, for anything. So this is actually a way to gather a, a collective uh, opinions on anything, not only on the, uh, the, the uh, time mm -hmm. estimations. Mm -hmm. um, so um, if you play poker, you know, we will have a, a, a set of cards. And um, in the planning poker, um, we will share a common uh, set of cards with the number uh, zero, half, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 20, 40, 100, uh, question mark. And um, uh, when uh, you are asked about uh, uh, the complexity or when you ask about how long it takes for you to finish a task, you pick up one of these cards that representing your uh, estimations. For example, you can pick that uh, 
20, uh, and another task you pick like 40, just to show that when you pick 40, you estimate it take like double time compared to uh, 20. And uh, you can pick like uh, eight, for example, uh, instead of 20, if you think, okay, that does, um, it take that much time compared to what you take. Uh, and um, when you play this game, uh, it um, need a moderator. Someone should be the admin of the game. Um, so um, first of all, uh, the guy will read out the task or the user story, things to be estimated. And uh, every person in the team uh, uh, think about it and give your estimations. Everybody give a number. For example, in this uh, diagram, in, in this table, round one, uh, uh, Peter uh, estimate that it, it, we give it number four, that represent the effort I need to complete the task. Dorothy give five, Derek give six, and Tom give four. Well, we see that there's a the, the rea variations between these numbers. They are not the same. So discussion is needed. And the admin will ask around why Peter thinks it takes four, why Dorothy thinks it takes five, why Derek thinks it takes six, and why Tom thinks it takes four. And uh, people say why they think so, and we expect that the number will be adjusted. Maybe Peter say, okay, I think that I should give it five instead of four after these discussions. And then uh, the number will come uh, closer. And you do this again and again, and we can have round three, four, five, and more until we reach uh, the consensus. Everyone in the team, for example, own thing, it will take five. So that's the way you uh, uh, estimate uh, for by planning poker. Um, Um, it's um, something you need to notice uh, when doing the uh, time estimation, when um, calculating durations, when calculating the critical path for the project is setting, putting in um, the, the um, overview of risk. Uh, there might be accident or emergence, or maybe somebody gets sick, and that might uh, impact a lot on the, the process. Uh, meetings, all kind of meetings might take time. So it's uh, also important to, to consider that. Uh, we have a, a spring break, like a post care, that, that uh, should be uh, taken into account. Uh, we have a contact with other customers. Um, yeah, and all other kind of unanticipated events should be uh consider so you will also do risk management as part of your plan on, on, on like calculating this uh okay so here yeah, just uh, to, for you to to know that uh, there's also another method uh, which is more uh, for the network analysis technique uh, used to estimate the project durations and uh is called like program evaluation and review technique. And uh, for example, uh, the time that can be led for or the duration can be related for a task can be uh, uh, can be average. It's uh, so like four time for the most likely time, one for the optimistic time, and one for pessimistic time, and divide by six. Uh, so yeah. So for example, here, um, your worst case scenario, it takes 24 days because somebody gets six. Uh, your best case scenarios, it may take eight working days. Yeah, I, I think we can uh, improve our speed and that's why we get eight. But most likely it takes like 10 days to finish the work. So uh, put it, put in this formula and you find out, okay, it's actually we need to take like 12 days, not 10. So by this way, uh, uh, estimation, you reduce the risk and you, uh, 
it it safer for you to and you're more confident that you get the work done within these days. Yeah, and uh, the final things, uh, the schedule control, um, just like the uh, scope control, you perform a reality check on schedules. Uh, you should allow uh, flexible uh, adoptions, uh, uh, ready to react on, on any unexpected events. Um, well, this is especially true. Don't plan for everyone to work 100% capacity and uh, of course, you have other things in your uh, to-do list or in your agenda, and you have. But you need to to make it clear with other team members. Uh, how uh, progress meeting? Uh, yeah. So when you follow Scrum, we need to have the meeting at least every two or three weeks, and uh, yeah, be honest about the process about any issues. There will be some tools, uh, as I mentioned, but um, I only give you uh, a template, an Excel template that uh, you can uh, create uh, your simple GAN chat based on that, but it don't give you uh, uh, like advanced uh, features like critical paths, uh, finding and yeah, on other controls. But um, yeah, but you can uh, try um, um, uh, project management tools that we know. So uh, um, I prepare for uh, this for you to do uh, in class, but actually we will not have time for this. So um, you can do this uh, within your team uh, as your, your own exercise. Uh, anyway, you have to make it and present it. So uh, the first thing is to define your product backlog. Yeah, now you know what is functional and non-functional requirements. Convert them to epics and user stories and put it in the product backlog. And maybe start thinking how to prioritize which user story are more important and, and where to put it, which screen you should put it in. Uh, exercise two, uh, of course, uh, you should make a work breakdown structure uh, based on your um product backlog assume you will follow scrum method with many sprints so oh, uh, i think i have i will correct if you wrong here and the next one based on the work breakdown structure make the game chat and maintain your game chat uh, estimating time for each task uh, activity yeah So um, this for the lecture. So any questions? So um, I'll be open for questions. Very good. So someone for for follow the the lecture. What is epic? So EPIC is a team, it's a very high level statement of requirement. Uh, it's high level statement of uh, demand actually. So customer can say, okay, we want the website to be easy to use. So that's for example one EPIC. It's not uh, concrete enough to be called user story and it defines an area and you have to break down the EPIC to multiple smaller user stories. Uh, you can uh, search for it. Yeah, okay. Augustino also, uh, that's clear to you. Uh, you have introduced a lot of options. Uh, there's a specific one. Uh, there are no uh, specific one. So I just say bring you uh, there's a requirement you will see in the UPGAP. Eh? For example, you have to make uh, the work breakdown structure. You need to make a GAN chat. You make to make a, a product backlog. And I want to see that in UPGAP 2, uh, where you write the report, uh, the project plan, uh, the, uh, the requirement. 
but uh, now you, you don't have uh, other than that uh, you know there's many options uh, in your hands uh, and uh, you are free you, you, you should be um, active on selecting what is the best uh, for, for, for your team mm -hmm. yeah and uh, yeah and the, the last uh, is a very uh, um, this uh, uh, yeah, okay, this is what, what will help you during the, this way. Uh, any tips against mismanagement? Um, well, um, I will need to uh, follow all of you um, throughout your projects. Uh, the theory is only the small part. The most important, the biggest part is uh, uh, your own uh, working. You work with uh, your team member on implementing the project. That's the biggest things. Uh, so um, I'm sure many of you will start with a, a, a not very uh, not in a very easy way. Uh, you don't have experience before. Absolutely, this will be the things. Uh, but um, no problem. But that that we we learn from that, and that's why you need to take this course. Uh, my suggestion, if yes, it is that you should um, keep the communication frequently. That's very important. Uh, keep uh, meeting uh, within the team at least three times per week, at least for this week and the next um, for the for this month, and uh, start uh, uh, thinking of uh, meeting the customer and and yeah, have the the milestone for the team. Um, okay, another thing is that uh, anybody here who uh, do not have a group, uh, if you don't have a group, um, you have to write your name here. I still get email about asking about group. That is, um, okay, you should. Uh, uh, if uh, you do not find your name here yet uh, in this link, then you have to write your name here in this. Uh... So I see many of you in this link and um, that's the same link that we have last week, but uh, if your name is not here, uh, I cannot help. I need to see uh, the name of student who will take the course uh, uh, this semester uh, today and because uh, I, I will finish with the group and with the project assignment today and if uh, anybody come later um, then it, it's very difficult uh, I, I do not allow one person or two people group and uh, you need to be at least in a team to work and um, 